Today we're going to go over general navigation features of the new C2100 monitor that you can find in your 2012 model Gleaner S series combines, as well as point out some differences from the previous C2000 monitor. So first of all, looking at the monitor itself, it is a little bit larger in size and you also have a brighter overall screen and it is completely touch. No soft keys on the side or turning that, that you saw with the C2000 monitor. And the back here is where you can turn it on or off, do any reset if necessary, as well as use the thumb drive for downloading information off the monitor. No longer do you have to use the SD card for downloading information or starting the task. It has its own internal memory, which is much larger than on the C2000 monitor, and faster that you can start a, a task and then later on save it with the thumb drive and then take it off to your laptop or desktop at home. So now if we look here more at the screen, this screen itself is going to be the main work screen that you're going to spend the vast majority of your time with. First though, we're going to go to the top here, and this is the overall screen that typically will come up when you start up your monitor. Now if the combine shows the screen that we were just on, all the different combine settings that we can go to. First though, we're going to go to the service screen. What this is going to show you is different things as far as, we'll just go from one to one, different units, uh, the metrics as far as um, you know, the different periods that we can use, decimal display, how far of the decimal you want to show, as well as date and time. So as we move down, here's where you can make your decimal adjustments if needed, and then just check out. And then here's the date and time. So this would probably be the key one as far as going to this screen, is just making sure the date and time is set correctly. As we see on here, it is. So once it is, go ahead and just hit the green check mark, and we can then check out and go back to the main screen. Now here, the file, this is going to be your task controller. This is where there's a pretty big difference from the C2000 to the C2100. It is definitely laid out differently. It has some updated as far as, you know, looking at different icons, things like that. If we want to set up a new task, hit that so you can start it. Go ahead and name the task whatever you would like. You can select the customer if you want to put yourself, or if you're a custom operator, you might put the farmer that you're working for that day. Select the farm whatever farm you want to name it in the field. The more detailed information you can put in here, the better it's going to be for organization when you go to download this information and transfer it to your laptop and use later down the road for, say, different purposes of research or just looking at last year's uh, numbers for a comparison to next year's harvest. So now we're going to go ahead and just check out of here. Go back to the main screen. Now we're going to go back to the combine. So when we look here, this is pretty much about the exact same as what you saw on the C2000. Just a quick rundown, this is the work screen, so you see this symbol here. Here's your yield, give you average and current in the field. Moisture, average and current. You go down to here, here's your bushels in the grain bin. Here's your cylinder speed in RPMs. Your concave opening in inches. Fan speed, which is going to be a maximum of seven then your forward speed, miles per hour. Also when you look up here, you have your uh, engine RPMs as well as overall temperature. And then you also have here cutting width, yield hold. Fuel, DEF. Now this one's important as far as showing how high the header's off the ground. So you can see the green in there showing where it is. Now you can go here and click on it to do any header height calibrations. We're just going to get back out of there. And also, if you see this red line, what that's indicating is if you go above that red line, any data collection in your task controller will not take place. It will understand that you, the head is too high to be operating in the field and it won't collect data that, as far as you moving. Now when it's below that red line, it will be collecting data and going into the task that you have set up. And you have these four down here. What's nice about these four is that they can be changed. So you see, you look at your crop temperature, you can click on it and change it to anything else as far as, say, your boost pressure. Change this boost pressure, we're going to go ahead and use height and tilt. So as you can see, I like to have this up in my combine, just like we have them actually on both sides here. What's going to happen is, you have the green check mark, green line, it shows you that your header is level. Now if you go, go ahead and start tilting the field, this line will tilt with it. It'll change into a brutal line going this way or going that way. 
And what's nice is when you're ready to adjust your header back to normal, this will indicate to you, let you know that it is completely level. So now we're going to move from the work screen up here that we see. to the crop settings. Right now it's set for barley. If we want to change that, just push on this. Now we can change it over to wheat if we would like. And now it shows you all your combine settings, factory settings for wheat. Where you want to have your factor at, rotor speed, concave, air, chaffer and sieve. Everything's there as far as the general starting point settings for you in the field. And if we move forward from there, then it goes to our combine settings. So it's going to give us header size, the header height calibration, everything along those lines. And what's nice to know is say a header 30, if you need to change that, just go ahead and check on the box. You can go to a 35 foot head, draper head, and then you're set. Or if you were to change it to corn, say, then all of a sudden it wouldn't show the header size, it would show the rows and width for the rows with the head. So this basically once you set the crop settings, that dictates what you will see in the combine settings. Now we'll go to the yield settings, and as you saw here in the crop, factor of 100, current and factory, so you can see there, that matches up as well. If there's changes to be made, all you would have to do is go ahead and click on that box, and if you need to change it to like say 92 for the factor, you can do that. Also test weight can be changed too, from current to the factory. Here's also where you can start an automatic yield calibration. Make sure you're measuring an actual grain, R exact with each other, and also a zero point calibration. If you need to do that, say when you're changing from field to field, day to day, or even trip to trip, that we will get to soon. Now we go to the moisture settings, and this is very important too, you can do a moisture calibration if need to, things like that. The big takeaway here is the alarm. So if you're in corn and you want to make sure you don't do anything over 22 for moisture, set it, and since the green check mark is there, the alarm is enabled. So anything over that moisture level, it will sense that and an alarm will go off. Or if the moisture setting wherever you are in the field isn't an issue, you can always just come here, uncheck it, and the alarm is disabled. It won't be an issue. Moving forward now to the trip screen. Here basically gives you summaries of four different trips that you can create. Also note, you see the work screen symbol that's there, right here. What that's doing is, all this information that is accumulating, as far as time in the field with the processor running, area and acres, bushels of grain and dry grain, as well as your yield, bushels per acre, and your overall capacity, bushels per hour, not to mention average moisture, will keep building up and showing you these averages but it will also show you for this trip based on this information so everything that's being averaged from the work from this trip trip will be from information on the work screen now if you want to change this trip to this one go ahead and click in here Make that one inactive. Make this one active. Also, you go up here and you can name it. Basically, you can name it whatever you would like to name. We're going to just go ahead and name this one Field 1. Now that is named. Now that information is processing. However, I would recommend you always leave this one, since it's reflecting that's off the work screen, open. If you leave that one active, that information will always continually build and give you that overall work screen information, and then use these three as separate trips. And this one can be your overall field use for the entire season. And then field one, field two if you want to, field three. Just make sure when you switch, like say from this one to this one, uncheck that, and now it's just this one working. If you have both of them checked, they will both be accumulating data at the same time, same type of information.
So now we're going to go down to 